friends, it's Jessica from Three Rivers Homestead, and I'm back with another weekly video. David is currently in the orthodontist, and I'm all alone in the car, and it's quiet, which is very rare, so I thought I'd seize the opportunity to film a quick intro for you and let you know what we were up to this week. We took a break from canning, so in lieu of canning footage, this week you're going to get one of our favorite breakfasts we've been having. I'm going to share that recipe with you. It's a super quick recipe. It takes me about 10 minutes to put together and then it can bake while we're doing our morning chores. That's a French toast casserole. The kids absolutely love it. Um, so I'm gonna share that with you. We did some seed saving this week, and that is just as important as food preservation because you know our plants are reaching the end of their life cycle. We're at that point of the growing season. They're putting out seeds, and saving those will ensure that we will be able to preserve food next year, be able to grow a garden next year. So. We're gonna show you that process. And then also we made some extracts this week. Uh, not just vanilla extract, but we did some fruit extracts and peppermint extracts. So if any of that interests you, why don't you stick around and enjoy this week's video. I had done a video before on how Adam had built us a Japanese style floor table and now that I'm really big and pregnant I was not enjoying getting up and down off of the floor so I asked Adam to extend the legs for me and last weekend he did that and so that has been one of the exciting things that happened this week is we got that new large family table installed back into our dining room area so we can once again eat as a family all together in that space and we have really been enjoying it the kids have been playing a lot more board games now that there's a table they can sit at we've been doing school at this table little kids playing so it's been a huge blessing and i think adam did a beautiful job on this table i am just extremely excited about that As you guys know from previous videos, we're back in the swing of school. Mom's been having chocolate, hot chocolate cravings. I must need magnesium in my pregnant body because uh, chocolate's high in magnesium. So we've been having our hot cocoa. The little boys enjoy when I make my homemade marshmallow fluff and they get to lick the beaters. And so we've been kind of, as a tradition now, enjoying our hot cocoa as we start our daily school day. With our Bible read aloud, everybody's drinking their hot cocoa, and it's been wonderful. I've also been trying to get back into the swing of baking. During the busy gardening and canning seasons, baking sort of takes a back seat because there just isn't the time to keep up with it. So this week, I decided um, between David and I, we were going to try to make some bread or something like that every day. David ha got, has gotten out my sourdough starter and is working on reviving it. We're going to get back into baking with sourdough. Just lots of exciting changes in the fall now that things are starting to slow down a bit. Let me show you that breakfast that I mentioned. So here's some of our leftover bread that we had baked this week. And whenever I have leftover loaves of bread like this, a great way to use it up is to make French toast casserole. So all I do is I cube up my bread like this into little chunks and just fill a pan. I grease the bottom of the pan with something like um, butter. We use palm fruit shortening just to make sure that nothing sticks. And the next thing we're gonna do is take some eggs and we're gonna make a French toast, you know, the same thing that you would make to make French toast on the stove. So we're gonna start with eggs. We had about 18 eggs there. And then we're gonna add some kind of milk. On this day, we're using coconut cream, but you could use cow's milk, any kind of non-dairy milk that you would want. And then we're going to pour that into the milk mixture. My bowl ended up being a little too small for what I was doing that day. So I need to transfer it to something bigger so that we can add some vanilla and some nutmeg and some not cumin. I need to read my labels better. <laughs> Good thing I didn't add the cumin. We're going to do cinnamon instead and mix that into this mixture just like you would with French toast. And then all we're going to do is pour that mixture over the top of our bread cubes there and make sure that we thoroughly soak all that bread. Every piece gets a little moist. There aren't any dry pieces sticking on the top. And then we're just gonna put this in the oven on 350 degrees and let it bake until it's done. It takes about mm, 35 to 40 minutes maybe. In the meantime, the kids are doing chores and I'm gonna work on syrup. I have this blueberry pancake syrup that I canned last year that needs to be used up. 
We're just gonna warm it up on the stove and I'm adding a little bit of maple syrup to it just to stretch it a little bit because one pint won't be enough for all of the children for this meal. And this will add some good maple flavor and kind of stretch that syrup a little bit. And we just want to kind of heat this up a little bit so it'll be warm and tasty poured over the casserole. This is how it looks when it's done baking. So you can see the top sort of browns a little bit. We've got our syrup here. We're gonna go ahead and pour some powdered sugar over the top. This you don't have to do. Um, some people like to add sugar to their French toast mixture. We prefer to leave the sugar out and then just kind of powder sugar, add powdered sugar to the top of it. The kids obviously really enjoy that. This is what it looks like after we cut it up. Pour a little bit of syrup over the top. You can use any syrup that you would like. It's just a really easy breakfast for a busy morning, and it's always a hit here. The kids always beg for more, so we're reaching the point where I'm probably going to need to make two casseroles with all of these little tummies to feed. If I made regular French toast, I'd be standing at the stove for 45 minutes flipping bread for all of these children, or I can just turn it into a casserole and get it done. Next, this week, we're focusing on seed saving. It's that time of year, and it's not just sunflowers, all of the other crops. Here's a cucumber that I let go to seed. When you're saving cucumber seeds, you want your cucumber to turn a yellow-orange color like this. That's how you know it's fully mature. And we're just going to cut this in half and show you what the seeds look like in the middle. There you go, nice big seeds. We're going to take a spoon and simply scoop the seeds out of the inside of this cucumber. Now cucumbers, tomatoes, and melons, you need to ferment the seeds in for about three days in order to break down the coating on the outside of, of the seed. So we're gonna take this bowl and we're gonna add a little bit of water to it. And what will happen is that will help that seed coating ferment and break down so that you can plant them next year. Here I am doing the same thing with the tomato, just gonna cut it and scoop it out. These will sit for three days, and what will happen is the good seeds will kind of sink to the bottom of our bowl here, and any bad seeds that are infertile, that you know wouldn't germinate, are gonna kind of float to the top. And it's a really easy process, and as I mentioned, you wanna do this with all of your tomatoes, your cucumbers, and your melons. Remember that these crops can cross-pollinate, so if you planted more than one variety of cucumber, you're going to end up with some kind of hybrid that isn't going to necessarily breed true and give you the same fruit next year. And same with tomatoes, so just remember that. Um, and we just do this as a backup. You like to have emergency seeds in storage because you never know, there might be a year where I can't access cucumber seeds or cucumber plants at the local nursery, it's really important to then save my own seeds. So here we go, three days, and you see we have some that have floated to the top, and what I'm gonna do is take a spoon and kind of scoop all of that gunk and all of the floating seeds off of the bowl, because those are the ones that will not germinate. Then I'm gonna take a little strainer, and I'm gonna pour the mixture through that so that I can collect the good seeds. I'm gonna run it under the water in the sink to kind of get all of the goop and extra stuff off. And then we're gonna put them on a paper plate or a paper towel and spread it out and let them fully dry before we store them. Doing the same thing with my tomatoes here. Remember these need to be completely dry. They'll probably sit out for at least a week before we put them in their seed packets and get them in storage. Otherwise they will mold while they are in storage. Up next this week, I'm gonna work on saving some zinnia seeds. These were given to me by my friend, Ruth Ann Zimmerman. She has a wonderful YouTube video all about zinnias and saving their seeds. I'm gonna link it in the description for you because it's very thorough and explains the whole process. She gave me these seeds last fall and I planted them this spring and they are so gorgeous that I want to make sure that I save seed for next year. And it's really just as simple as letting these flower heads completely dry and then I can harvest the seeds from them later. Make sure you watch Ruth Ann's video for more thorough instructions on that process. 
the next project that I mentioned we did this week was making some homemade extracts. So I had Adam go to the liquor store and pick me up the cheapest 80 proof vodka he could find. When you make extracts, you want to make sure that your alcohol is 80 proof so that it's safe in storage. And you can use any kind of alcohol, um, vodka, rum, bourbon, whatever you want. Um, this is actually some vanilla extract that I did last January using vegetable glycerin. If you don't feel comfortable using alcohol, you can use vegetable glycerin. That's what's in this little jar right here. I started this during our pantry challenge last January and didn't want to go to the store to buy alcohol, so I used up the glycerin that I had in the house. And it also makes a wonderful vanilla extract. I'm just straining out the vanilla beans and pouring the glycerin extract into an old vanilla jar. I always save my old extract jars and just refill with homemade stuff. And it's really that simple. I get my vegetable glycerin from Azure Standard. Um, if you're looking for that and want an alternative to the alcohol, that's a great option. So we've got our little jar of vanilla extract here ready to go into storage. I save all of my vanilla beans. You can get more than one batch of vanilla out of your beans. I tend to use them probably five, six times. <laughs> I just keep filling a jar with spent beans. And each time I make a new batch, I might add one or two new vanilla beans. You see how full that is with spent beans? And that is how I make my extract. So we're just gonna top that jar off with some more new vodka. And then this is going to sit up in my cupboard where I work on my extracts for probably the next six to nine months until I run out of vanilla and need some more. Just give it a little shake and then that'll be ready to go in the future sometime. So making vanilla extract is really that simple. It's really affordable, easy to do. We're gonna put these vanilla extracts up into the cupboard. That's what we'll use right now for our baking. Up next, we're going to work on some peppermint extract. This is some that I made last fall. I generally make it in the fall, let it kind of extract all through the next year, and then I use the previous year's extract in the following year. So right now we're working through what would it be, 2020's extract. This is 2021's extract that we'll use next year, and so forth. So just like with the vanilla, I'm straining out the extract and leaving behind the spent peppermint leaves. We'll just put a lid on top of this and make sure we label it because once the leaves are out of it, it's kind of hard to tell what's in each of these jars. So we're just gonna label that mint. You may be wondering what I use mint extract for. We do it in a lot of our holiday baking. When I make homemade marshmallows, sometimes we like those to be mint flavored and that's mainly where I use that. Now we're starting a new batch of peppermint extract. I'm actually using apple mint because I have probably four or five types of mint growing in my garden right now, and the apple mint was the one that smelled the most fragrant. We're starting to get toward the end of the growing season, and so my actual peppermint just wasn't as pungent smelling as the apple mint was, and so I decided I'm gonna try this year to make an apple mint extract instead. So all I'm doing is I rinse this and I'm pulling off the leaves. When you make an extract in alcohol, you can use the wet leaves. They do not need to be dried because that will not mold. That 80 proof alcohol content is enough to prevent any kind of molding or anything. It's very different than you when then when you infuse things in like oil where if you used a wet leaf that would cause the oil to go rancid. So I realized my jar here was too big, so I just pulled out a half pint jar and I'm moving all of my leaves over to that. And then just like with the, oops, move the vodka away from the baby. That's not a good idea. <laughs> just like with the vanilla extract, we're gonna pour the vodka over the leaves here. We're just gonna sit this up in the cupboard. And as I mentioned, this will end up being the mint extract that I'll be using in 2023. So that'll just sit there probably until next year when I start next year's batch. Extracts are so fun to make and they really do kind of enhance the flavor of your baking. This right here is some lemon extract 
that's an old batch I just have half a jar left and so I had started in January some lemon extract when I had my bulk citrus order you can see it right there so we're just gonna refill this jar David likes to use lemon extract pretty much once a week he uses it um, when he makes things like lemon biscotti or sometimes he'll make like lemon poppy seed muffins you just add a little bit of that fragrant extract and it really enhances the lemon flavor so we are we've got a full jar here that'll get us through another year I probably won't make more lemon extract this January because we're so good on that for a while but what I did want to start on this day was some orange extract these are freeze-dried orange slices they smell amazing these were also from that bulk citrus order that we did in January so I'm just taking some of these dried orange slices filling up a little half pint jar and we are going to make orange extract I thought that would be fun um, we can do some baking and whenever we want a little orange flavor this will taste wonderful so your freeze dried fruit is going to be a little harder to get into your jar but once you wet it with the vodka it will kind of soften up you can push it down into the jar a little bit and then add some more fruit so I'll show you that right here we're just pouring the vodka over the top of those orange slices remember you could also do this with um, wet slices fresh slices from oranges if you have those you don't need to use the dried slices as I mentioned once they're wet they can kind of push down a little bit so we're adding a little extra to the top we want this jar as full as possible to get the most orange flavor that we can get out of this little batch putting a lid on top shake it up that'll also go into our extract cabinet there we go beautiful and since we have extra vodka I thought why not make a blueberry extract same thing these are freeze-dried blueberries you could use fresh blueberries if you wanted to and I'm just filling a little jar with those we're gonna top off with the vodka and then when I make blueberry muffins and things I thought it would be fun to have a little blueberry extract to add to that to just enhance the flavor this is kind of an experiment I've actually never done blueberry extract before but I figure if it works with other fruit why not try it with some berries the only extract I want to do that I haven't tried before is almond extract I've heard that you can do that with peach pits actually and I just forget to do it every year but we'll try that next year there is my vanilla extract that I started there by the time that's finished that whole jar will be a dark color we've got our peppermint extracts both the finished product and the new one that I started here we've got that lemon extract on the bottom and then the new batch of orange extract there on top and then we've got our little jar of blueberry extract and I am done making extracts for this year these will all go in the cabinet and I wanted to show you all of my oil infusions that I have currently going in the kitchen window so all of these are calendula oil that will be used to make salves and soaps along with this lemon verbena oil it smells amazing you guys should smell it this is goldenrod oil it's great for making rubs for arthritis and things that's wild rose oil and down there I have some yarrow that is infusing in witch hazel I use that to make baby wipes so I'll show you all of that this fall when we do our soap making and a lot of our other kind of things that we do once the food preservation um, season slows down a little bit speaking of food preservation I did not get to any canning today but I did get to some freeze drying that's the leftover tomato bits from the chili we made last week I had some bananas here that were really going brown and rather than use up freezer space I decided to freeze dry those bananas kind of mash them up and then when I want to make banana bread I can rehydrate these and kind of turn them into a banana puree that then we can make banana bread with so just kind of using up some odds and ends on this day I have been canning for almost two months straight daily if not every other day so I just told myself this week I need a week off from canning and I didn't do any projects and it actually was really nice but we will definitely be back to canning next week because there is more work to be done just extra okra from the garden okra is one of those crops that are just producing like crazy right now I have to get out there every day or else um, it'll get too big and 
So we have to harvest our okra quite often. The final thing I'm putting on a tray that I forgot to show here is pickle juice. And that was an experiment that I wanted to try out. I'm going to show you the results here. So my thought with the pickle juice was that it could dry into a powder that would taste really good on popcorn or even if I make homemade potato chips. And like I said, this was totally an experiment. I had no idea how it would turn out. And look at it. It turned out great, except for the fact that it really stuck to the tray. So in the future, when I make this, I will freeze the pickle juice into ice cubes, lay down parchment paper, and then freeze dry it that way. And that will prevent all this waste that was kind of stuck to the tray. But besides the sticky mess, the powder that I was able to salvage smells amazing. It's like pickle juice on steroids. It's really pungent. And Adam is extremely excited. He said this weekend he wants me to make popcorn and then sprinkle that over the top. And so I think that's what we will doing with, be doing with all of our pickle juice in the future. Just kind of a fun treat that keeps that pickle juice from going to waste. Here are those bananas that I mentioned. I'll just fill that jar up with a little bit of water and rehydrate when I want to bake with those bananas. And then this is the tomato mixture, all the skins and seeds and things from our chili canning last week. Here we go, we got it all in the jar. And when I want to use this, I can, um, I'm gonna powder it down a little more in my food processor and then I can make tomato paste. There's that pickle juice powder going to be amazing. I have I have plans to do a full batch with all four trays of that this week. Okra, freeze-dried okra is great just to throw in soups in the winter. That's how we'll use that. And then of course the banana. As always, loving my freeze dryer. If you want to learn more about freeze drying, check out the link in my description. We have the medium-sized harvest right with the premier pump and we really enjoy it. That's about it for this week, you guys. Other than all the normal chores and school and everything, Adam and the boys were working on extending our driveway a bit, so they've been busy digging out some areas and laying stone, and it's always fun when we get to work together on projects like that. We've had to do some projects with the animals, some rearranging in the chicken coops, and we're going to need to process our second batch of meat birds here in the coming weeks. But otherwise, just trying to enjoy these last days of summer. The weather is beautiful. It's cooling down. It's feeling like fall. We can be outside without <laughs> getting all sweaty and hot. And the kids have definitely been taking advantage of that. Playing football, playing baseball out in the yard. It's been a wonderful week. I hope you guys enjoyed this little peek into our week. We will be back next week with another video. Until then, I hope you guys are blessed and we will talk to you later.